Which team will win the English Premier League? Can we predict this using only individual player ratings? Let's see. Greetings and welcome to Football Player Ratings. My name is Lars Magnus and today I will talk about how we can predict who will win the English Premier League. At the time of recording this video, the Premier League table looks like this. There are several interesting questions about the future of this table. Who will win the league? Which of the top six will end up in the top four and qualify for the Champions League? And which three teams will have to face the dreaded relegation to the championship? I will soon explain how individual player ratings, such as the ones presented in videos on this channel, can be used to predict this. However, first, why don't we have a look at the resulting predictions? One way to present the prediction is like this. Here we see, for each team, the probability of ending in each table position. The favourites to win the league are Manchester City and Liverpool, with corresponding probabilities of 51 and 48% respectively. The most likely candidates for relegation are Huddersfield, Fulham and Cardiff. With respect to ending top 4, as an example, Manchester United has a 45% chance of qualifying for the Champions League. Before we look at these results from a few other perspectives, let's have a look at how they were obtained. After all, if we don't know how the figures were calculated, we might as well agree that they are quite useless. The short story is that the predictions are calculated as in this paper, and the long story is something that would require some knowledge of mathematics to fully enjoy. I will try to take a middle ground and present the main ideas, with only a few references to the details. The process can be divided into two steps. First, we will use our individual player ratings to predict the outcome of individual matches based on the starting lineups of each team. Second, we will use our ability to predict single matches to simulate all the remaining matches of the league, and then sum up the results to obtain the final league table. So let's start with the first step. We want to predict the outcome of a match based on the 22 players that start a match. Let's say that we have a list of past matches with known outcomes. By outcome I will in this context mean whether the match ended with a home win, a draw or an away win. For each match we also need to know the starting lineups. Then we can calculate the average ratings for the players on the home team minus the average ratings for the players on the away team. The result is an indication of the difference in playing strength between the two teams. What we now do is to find a function that takes as an input the difference in average ratings and returns probabilities for the three possible match outcomes. This is where the mathematics kick in and an ordered logit regression model is built using maximum likelihood estimation. The result looks like this. For a given difference in average ratings, we can determine probabilities for a home win, a draw and an away win that are consistent with the outcomes observed in our list of past matches. This first step has already played an important role for us, as we have used the quality of the resulting probabilities as one of two criteria to determine which of our player rating models are better than the others. For deriving probabilities of different league positions, we need a second step though. We need to look at each of the remaining matches of the league and then try to figure out what might happen. This is the procedure that we follow. For each of the remaining matches, find the potential starting lineups for each team and select one of them. In this, we try to mimic that some players may be injured or suspended and that otherwise the manager will try to select the best players according to some formation. Use this to calculate the difference in average ratings, which then leads us to probabilities for a home win, a draw and an away win. Select an outcome at random based on the calculated probabilities. Record the required statistics for each team after all remaining matches have been considered. This corresponds to a single simulation of the league. There is a lot of randomness involved, so to get a better idea of what may happen, the simulation has to be run many times, and the average results from all the simulations lead to our final predictions. I promise to have a look at the predictions for the Premier League again, from some different perspectives as well. Looking back to the same prediction table, I would like to point out that in addition to estimating the probabilities for each table position and each team, we also have the expected number of points at the end of the season for each team, as well as the expected number of points for each final position. 
For example, Liverpool are expected to get 92.5 points, whereas the league winners are expected to get 94.3 points. But how has this expected number of points changed since the beginning of the season? By going back and doing the simulations at different points in time, using only the information that would have been available back then, we can plot the expected points for each team as a function of time. This can give us an idea about which teams appear to have performed better or worse than the expectations that we had prior to the season. For example, Fulham appear to have underperformed compared to the expectations of the model. There are also other graphs and tables that we can produce based on the simulations, and perhaps we shall have a look at some of those later. Are there any other leagues that we should look at using this same simulation tool? Please let me know what you think about that. For now, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you again in the next one.